All right, so for week 11's activities, let's go over what we need to get done. Uh, so this is for salinity sensor calibration and then mixture uh, control experiment. So uh, on your list of activities, if you read through uh, the Project 2 materials, we're going to confirm and kind of clean up the heater and solenoid valve control circuits, so the stuff we've done in the last few weeks. Um, create a program to operate the valves, uh, especially for the second part of this experiment. Um, we're going to set up the connections for the salinity sensor, uh, create a program to activate that sensor. Um, it does emulate a light sensor. We'll talk more about that when we get to it. And then finally, we're going to set up the flow group and remove the bubbles. Uh, that's our primary activities. These lead to our other uh, experiments we need to get done. All right, so let's um, start off uh, looking at the board here. Uh, we have added a few things, but let's talk about what's not new. Again, your um, three relays that are going to control the heater, uh, valve one and valve two. These circuits need to be cleaned up and uh, made more neat. Uh, again, work on the um, switch that you're responsible for. Um, again, from the RCX out to these relays and then from these relays out to the valves and heater. Get those cleaned up. So let's talk briefly about the programs we're going to need to operate these two relays. Um, because they'll be operating the valves. Let's do a quick look at um, Le Lego RoboLab. So again, this is just a simple program. It's going to mm -hmm. activate motor B uh, for a couple of seconds. You'll have to adjust the time later on in this uh, week's activities and then stop motor B. And so if you're going to switch and activate motor C, again, if, we guys, if you haven't seen this yet, one quick way to do that is to uh, right-click, use the replace command, follow the menu system and replace it with motor C. Uh, similarly, you can do that on right click, replace, uh, go to the stop, C. And so then you can reprogram. Keep in mind, um, you shouldn't have to move your Lego robots uh, closer to the sensor. It should reach across the room. Um, so let's keep that in mind. All right. So now let's take a look at setting up the salinity connections. We'll come out to the salinity sensor. This last week the wires on the sensor were wrapped around here, just completing our flow loop. So again, the salinity sensor is just two stainless steel probes going into the um, flow loop. So as the conductivity in the water changes, electrons can pass through this loop easier. And so if the, excuse me, I should say if the conductivity is increasing, the electrons can pass through here easier. So this is essentially a resistor that changes depending on the salinity of the water inside. And so we'll need to uh, connect this here and get it over to our, uh, let me get this in here. All right, so that's one. Let's grab our other connector wire here. So that gets the center the, the, to the terminal block. Now let's get it back over to the board. I'm gonna slide it in behind here. And here. All right. So now we'll follow that wire all the way around over here and we'll connect it on this side. And again, these wires are long so that we can keep the water source away from our electronics, just as a good practice here. So let's um, connect this up. So what we're doing here is we're tying that variable resistor that results from the salt water into another circuit. And so these down here. So this is our salinity uh, sensor um, conditioning electronics is uh, one, one of the phrases they use. And so what this does, this circuit allows us to take that resistor, make it part of a circuit that will create an output that the RCX can understand. And so this first section, uh, this is not important that you know this, but we'll go over it for those that might be interested in uh, electrical concepts. This is a 555 timer circuit. So it creates a variable frequency um, signal. 
Now, we talked about that during our um, work with the RCX outputs. So as the frequency of this signal changes, um, now it goes into another piece of electronics. That piece of electronics takes the frequency and converts it into a voltage. So this ranges from 0 to 5 volts, and it varies with the change in frequency. Now, that uh, change in voltage here uh, would normally be able to be read by the RCX, but we have to add a third um, element to this circuit. It's called a buffer circuit. All this circuit does is allows the RCX to talk with this piece of electronics without um, uh, messing up the signals. Uh, we had to add this after I designed this piece here. So, now, uh, these two wires here are our outputs here. They come out, we'll have to uh, hook them into one of the inputs on the RCX. And so let's um, get this in here. And one, and two. All right, so, and today we're gonna go ahead and use input one. And so this is the end of our connections on our RCX. So we've got input one is going to be our salinity sensor. Input two is going to be the um, temperature sensor that we messed with last week. So um, again, if we go to view our uh, salinity sensor, it's reading a value of 99 right now. Now we haven't programmed this yet, so let's take a quick look at that. what that program is going to look like. So... We've got, uh, again, this sensor uh, acts just like a light sensor. Actually, when we designed it, we used the uh, concepts of the light sensor to prepare the circuit. And so this is a uh, wait for light command, and we've assigned it to sensor port number one. And so uh, the sole purpose of this program is to uh, tell the RCX that we have a light sensor, in our case, a salinity sensor, uh, connected to port one and start treating that as such. And so I've already programmed this in the RCX, and the next step is to, once you've loaded it, make sure, again, like last week, run the program once, and then uh, the other thing you might need to do is cycle through the commands to get it to read properly. Now, it's reading 99 because there's no water in the system, and uh, that's what it reads when it's got no water. So. Now, let's see what else we've got here. So the last piece we need to do here is set up, the, confirm that the flow loop is set up. So let's take a look at that. So again, this is really no change from last week. We still have our heater and our thermometer sticking down in the tank. The pump is going to uh, eject the water, send it through the salt sensor, and directly back to the tank. And so our flow loop's all set up, the connections are nice and tight, and it should work just fine. All right, so let's take a look at our mixtures we're gonna test. So as your homework for week 10, you're preparing these mixtures so we can check their salinity levels against the RCX readings. So this data sheet's what you'll be preparing. You'll have two sources, a DI water source and a 0.15% saline source. You're gonna need to combine those to make these different sources. And so first two, the first one's easy and the last one's also easy. So uh, you need to come to class with these numbers prepared uh, and we're, I'm going to go through that right now. So um, that's come to class with that information prepared. And what you're going to do as far as an experiment is uh, put these in the system and identify the RCX display. So let's go ahead and take that data right now. So I've got a 0.15% saline solution and the other ones you will have prepared. I'm just going to do a couple of them for you right now, but I'll do the 0.15 first since it's involved in the calibration. Again, I've got over 200 milliliters here. Uh, your team knows what your tank volume is. So, and we'll fire up this pump. Stop it once, let some of the bubbles come out. And then, yeah, that's pretty good. All right. So it's uh, recirculating nicely, and uh, the first step in your activities this week is to do a calibration. So this is the 0.15% saline. It's creating a reading right now of one or two. It's varying a little bit. We're reading on sensor one, and the reading is one, sometimes two. So what we want to do is control. We need to adjust this resistor so that this reading is five or six. So I'm going to use a small 
um, screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and turning counterclockwise increases the number and clockwise decreases the number. So I'm going to run it up to where it's uh, just above 5, 6. The instructions say 5 to 8, but 5 should be easy enough to reach, so we'll go with the lower value. So this means that your initial calibration is done. You won't have to touch this unless you think the calibration is out and you have to start over. Unlikely, but if it's necessary, it shouldn't take you but just a few minutes. So there's our first reading. So our first reading at 0.15% is 5. And so you'll be completing these other ones, but let's go through that process. So we'll stop the pump. And let's carefully lift this up without dumping too much water. Now this is a good time to remember the reason that we have the long wires on all these connections is so that the water can be separated from the electrical uh, equipment. And so I'm letting some of the water drain out of the pump and we'll dump that back in. All right, so I'm going to save this uh, right now so we can mix either mix some other samples or actually use it, actually use it here in the saline tank. Um, up here. Right. So you put in your next sample. Um, I'm happy to choose the DI, but you should do them in order. Add, add in your next sample. Uh, the instructions ask you to wipe that out first. Probably a good idea. A uh, little bit of contamination between the samples. Again, uh, run the bubbles out. It might take a couple of turns. And if you don't like the noise, you can try it again. That's a little bit better. All right, so um, now deionized water has very little conductivity, and so you'll notice that we have a 99. So I've just shown you both ends of the spectrum, and so your job is to put in the different mixtures and take this reading. And so um, take this over to our data sheet. You will have completed these samples, and uh, 99 is our last value here for me. Um, I'll pause this for a second. So again, once you've taken this data, like last week, you've got two charts to make because we'll need to go both ways in terms of converting the data. If we know the percent salt, we want to know what RCX display we're going to need. Um, these numbers, uh, I think I discussed them in the lecture, uh, the chart does kind of roll off. And so when you choose your trend line, you may want to exclude some data. Um, but we'll have to see how that data looks because you like the lice flat line piece here. You'll also have to convert the other way because if we know the RCX display, you'd like to know what the percent salt is. And so create both of these graphs so that we can use them similar to what you did in week 10. All right, so that's the end of the first part of this experiment. Now we move on to predicting change uh, in the tank as a result of these measurements. Um, in order to do that, we'll need to know how much water the... Um, valves release when you open them. And so in order to change the tank salinity, we'll need to know this. And so if we determine how many um, milliliters flows through the valve every second, that's the experiment you'll need to do. Let me give you a little bit of a quick advice on that. So the saline tank is uh, connected. Well, let's do it on the deionized water tank here. So if you unplug from the valve side. Our source for deionized water is going to go through valve, uh, we'd have to double check which valve this is, this is valve one. Um, and so if we uh, carefully unhook uh, valve one's output from the tank and can pour it right in here. So what you can do is activate this valve for three seconds and then measure the mass of the water that drains into the cup. So that'll give you a flow rate. And I would try this at a couple of different times to get some good data on this, probably two or three different times, and measuring the mass per second or volume per second will be more than enough. So you put that back on there. You don't need to press them on all the way. That's what makes it difficult to get off. So, uh, so that's the, for each valve you get the flow rates per second that, you, that you'll need. Now, this is the where some more calculations come into play, like last week, predicting what change you're going to have. Uh, so we're going to place an unknown volume in the tank, and here's my strategy for doing that. Um, say you finish with the DI water, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a little bit of the 0.15 and start the um, pump running. 
And so that mixture is unknown. And so if we take a look at that, since I added a little bit of saline water, instead of the 99 it was reading before, it's reading 79 or 80. And so you'll need your graphs to figure out what that value is. And then now the goal is if you add five milliliters of the saline side or the DI side, what change do you expect? So um, go back to your data uh, and do the calculation to determine if you put in five milliliters of DI water or five milliliters of salt water, what change in the RCX reading will you expect to see? So you'll need to know the change in salt level and then you also need to use your graphs to convert to that RCX display reading. So that's the end of the activities for this week. Um, keep yourself uh, on track and this should go fairly easily. Um, we'll look forward to seeing you in class.